This is Pictopix, a 2017 nonogram puzzle game developed by Tom Lab Games, similar to Square Cells and Paint It Back. It has about 200 puzzles of increasing size and difficulty, has had many free updates since launch, and has a nice colour scheme. While you can play this using the mouse, because the size of the squares varies so much across the puzzles, it's best to make voice commands which use the keyboard controls. The spacebar fills squares as part of the pattern, X marks things as not part of the pattern. One useful thing is that when casually moving around the grid, you can go off one edge and back onto the other side. Meanwhile it stops you doing that if you're holding down keys for filling or clearing. I've been able to play this with voice bot and voice attack, though Cola 3 would probably also work. Commands of the form direction, number, are essential for getting around these grids, and it's useful to have the symmetric commands number, direction. Each of these presses the appropriate cursor key the stated number of times. However, I found that it doesn't accept multiple consecutive key presses that well without a delay between them, and a delay of 0.05 seconds was enough for every single key press to be recognised. You need to make your commands for filling and clearing squares, and as good practice they should release all keys before they press the appropriate key. It also helps to have a general release command that just releases all keys you might be holding down. Sometimes the software thought I was saying release the instead of release, so I've just included that as an option so I don't get any more false negatives. After doing some timing calibration, I made a shortcut command for pressing the necessary keys to go to the next puzzle after you've completed the current one. In gameplay, I often found that after marking several squares in a row, I wanted to put an X on the end. Rather than having to say four commands to release spacebar, move one square, press X, and move back one square, I made commands of the form cap direction, which does all four things in one go, saving me a good number of commands. It does allow you to use the letter C for what it calls marks, where you mark an area as hypothetically being part of the pattern, but distinct from the regular colouring. This is to help you with counting squares in rows and columns, hypothesising where things might go. I've not used these, partly because I'm not used to using them, and partly because I already use the word mark in my command for filling in squares, as I have done for years, so including these other marks would lead to confusion. You can manually decolor the numbers around the edges. You make a command which holds down the left Alt key. Then you browse the numbers around the edges using the cursor keys, clearing or unclearing them with the spacebar. Holding the spacebar down allows you to clear several in a row, which may or may not be helpful. To the top left of the larger puzzles there are these arrows, which can be used for removing the interface options in the top left and right, however you can only activate these by manually clicking on them, and it also makes it hard to see the numbers at the top. Browsing the puzzles by keyboard is a bit clunky. They come in sets of 15, and each of these squares on the bottom represents a particular batch of 15. Nice and easy to click on if you're able to use the mouse. When using the arrow keys, you can go down and select the next one, but then it puts the selected box back on one of the puzzles. So you have to go down again, press the arrow, down again, and press the arrow. And you can't easily get from the left arrow to the right arrow or the other way round. Here on the right arrow, if I press left, I go to the puzzle up here. I then have to press left and down. Similarly, I have to press right a couple of times and then down to get to the right arrow. So it's clunky, but it is still doable. Another alternative to doing the browsing is to go to the bottom right and select random. Here you set your minimum and maximum grid width and height, and you can include solved puzzles or not. In my case it says zero puzzles available because I've solved all of them, but earlier on this would have shown a good number available, and as soon as you've completed one you can say next level, and it would just take you to another one. So in that way, it's possible to play through all the levels without having to do the awkward browsing at the bottom. Like Paint It Back, Pictopix has a limited number of music tracks, so after a couple dozen puzzles you might choose to pause the music and play your own. Although if you like jazz, bossa nova and lounge style piano music, you'll feel very comfortable. At the end of each puzzle, it gives you between one and three awards. You get one award for completing the puzzle, 2 if you have the hints disabled, 
and for 3 you need to complete it with hints disabled and few mistakes. The number of mistakes you can afford to make increases with the size of the puzzle. The hint system is quite innovative. You can choose it to automatically decolor numbers that have been satisfied, as happens in square cells, and paint it back. Or choose that it highlights in blue columns and rows on which there are deductions you can make. Or have both. In this way, it makes the nonogram puzzle style easier to get into for beginners. However, to get three awards on each puzzle, you need to do them with no hints and making few mistakes. Losing the automatically decolored numbers means you either need to use the keyboard controls to manually decolor them, one at a time, or do no decoloring and pay a huge amount of attention to the numbers on the sides throughout each puzzle. Manual decoloring means interrupting your normal flow of solving the puzzle, doing once every single time you've satisfied one of the numbers. But the alternative, which I did, is to hold all that extra information in your head and miss out on the progressive indication of how far you are through the puzzle, which would normally look like this. This is cognitively more challenging, but faster, so it may be worth trying if you are well practiced and confident with these types of puzzles. In either case, you will need to be patient with having spent over an hour on a puzzle just to find that you made an error in the first 20 minutes. If you do get sick of trying to solve a specific puzzle without hints, there are player guides with pictures of the solutions which you can refer to for manually filling them in. Personally, I don't think this is cheating yourself, because you need to solve enough puzzles at the maximum level just to unlock and be able to try all of the puzzles. Also, manually filling in puzzles from a picture is really, really boring, almost feeling like extra punishment. In 2018, the Endless mode was added, consisting of randomly generated grids in whatever size range you liked. However, they don't represent any specific picture. You will never run out of puzzles, though you may find it unsatisfying for them to not turn into a proper picture at the end. Also in 2018, the Challenges mode was added, consisting of puzzles you need to do against the clock. Four 5x5s, three 7x7s, one of 5, 7 and 10, and a 15x15. And your gameplay is uploaded to leaderboards, which are refreshed every half hour. There are some achievements for doing these in a very short time, which are impossible to do with voice commands, as you just can't fill the puzzle fast enough. However, if you disconnect from the internet, you can use Cheat Engine to slow down the game, beat the times and get the corresponding achievements, without uploading a replay to the leaderboards. Note that this will crash the game when it tries to upload it, and you'll need to close and restart the game. But you'll still be credited for passing the challenge, whilst not credited with unfairly fast performances. In 2019, the Mosaics mode was added, where grids consisting of individual square puzzles needed to be solved. Once you've solved every single one, the entire mosaic is revealed, with your total time in the bottom right. There's two more sizes of this, and for me this added another 11 hours of gameplay. Once you've solved the mosaics, the challenges, and the 200 or so puzzles, there is a community workshop of puzzles made by players, over 1,700 made in the last couple of years. And you can specifically try to solve ones made by the developer. There are also some odd achievements that you can get by doing obscure tasks beyond simply solving the puzzles at their hardest. For these, you'll either need to get very lucky with your timing or use an achievements guide. Overall, I liked this game a lot. I played without manually marking the numbers, so it progressively became more challenging. But I chose my way into that, and as a result enjoyed it. And it took me about 120 hours to solve everything. If you want to see some voice control gameplay, follow the linked video here or in the description.